the first question that we have is from Anu. Uh, as you can see, it is a finding error question. We have uh, one, two, three, four parts to this question, right? Jayesh loved his guru immensely. That's part A. And gave him fullest loyalty. That's part B. Yet he had his own. That's part C. Independent way of thinking. That's part D. Right? So four parts. Um, and we need to figure out which part has the error. Right? So so some of you are coming back and saying it's part two. Uh, I, I, I thought I saw somebody saying uh, part four. So a lot of you are coming back and giving me uh, two options. So basically the options I see is B and D. So let's quickly look at it. Right? Uh, Jayesh loved his guru immensely. Let's look at the first part. So the action word here is loved. Right? So immensely, which we know is an adverb, it has the suffix ly, which is only intensifying the verb love, right? It is answering the question to what extent this person loved his guru immensely, right? So the first part seems fine. Immensely, the adverb uh, intensifying the verb loved makes sense. There is no error in part A and gave him fullest loyalty. So here, uh, second part, it sounds kind of uh, funny right uh, I have loyalty obviously this word here is an adjective describing the loyalty or giving me additional information about the loyalty right and if you notice it is in the superlative form right we know the degrees of comparison we have the positive degree we have the comparative degree and we have the superlative degree where we know that superlative usually I have the the adjective right with EST right the dash whatever right so here obviously I need a word that usually connects or associates itself with loyalty last year I just put it on full screen mode and change the resolution you'll have no problem yeah so gave him fullest loyalty uh, seems or sounds a little weird or funny so let's just take the word loyalty alone right what word can i usually associate loyalty with you think of other adjectives right think of other adjectives usually when i say um, loyalty think of other adjectives that go with loyalty right i can say somebody gave undivided loyalty right that's a collocation when I say collocation I'm talking about group words complete undivided means nothing but complete or total right complete loyalty undivided loyalty this is one collocation so basically I'm talking about adjective plus noun collocations right that's what we are looking at right now so for those of you who are new collocations are nothing but two or three words that go together usually right? because we we've, we've seen that in various contexts people use that repeatedly yeah and the other one is unswerving unswerving loyalty right unswerving means something that is very steady or constant right now for me this fullest loyalty is not sounding right right either I have to use I anyway have to change the phrase in B so I can say Jayesh loved his guru immensely and gave him his undivided loyalty or gave him his unswerving loyalty that makes more sense anyways hi Sandeep anyways the phrase has to be complete right so I can either say gave him his undivided loyalty or I can say gave him his unswerving loyalty right these are the right collocations to go with loyalty fullest sounds weird or funny or you know, it just doesn't sit right for me at least right or even if I have to keep fullest okay chalo let's say fine but for me that's not the right word even if I have to use that I still have to include this his gave him his fullest loyalty but 
I would rather say if this question came in sentence improvement, right, and if there are options for the adjective, I will definitely not use fullest. I will either use undivided loyalty or unswerving loyalty, which is the more appropriate collocation or which is the more right collocation, right? And then move on. So we understand that part B has an error, but sometimes what happens is there is a sentence where there is more than one part that has an error. Unfortunately, hopefully we will not come across questions like this in our exam, right? If it is that, if that is the case, I would rather advise you to skip it. But let's look at the next part. Yet he had his own. Yeah, Jayesh loved his guru immensely and gave him his undivided loyalty or and gave him his unswerving loyalty. Yet he had his own independent way of thinking. Now, why most of you came back and said part D? Can somebody tell me some of you said right part d has an error what is the error in part d what do you need to do you have to include something do you have to delete something what do we need to do in part d a lot of you said part d right what is the error in part d which means we are looking at um, superfluous words right i have own and then i have independent both convey the same meaning right i don't need both the words in this context so own way of thinking is a more appropriate collocation right a more appropriate phrase so i will delete independent i don't need this word again which is already giving me the meaning right can you think of superfluous words like this so when we look at one question it is good for us to have an understanding of other superfluous uh, words can you think of superfluous words Two words that give the same meaning and we actually use it in conversations and otherwise superfluous words or expressions blunder mistake okay think of think of uh, yeah return back yeah I'm just gonna write some examples you also think of it we we actually keep using this without knowing that we're actually using two words that have the same meaning so especially when uh, in a things like you know finding errors it's good to know some superfluous words so we'll be able to easily identify errors pertaining to superfluous words right namrata says return back yes that's a superfluous expression right i'm putting down some examples you also think of examples repeat it again yeah i've heard people say that right it's very it's a very conversational thing more deeply look at all these words that i have put down also yeah added bonus bonus itself means something in addition right actual experience experience cannot be anything other than actual fundamental means basic dilemma dilemma is something where you're not able to decide right it's very difficult for you to come to a decision direct confrontation confrontation means head on you are directly, uh, you know, either getting into a fight or debating with this person. Final outcome. Outcome is an end result. Right? I want you to kind of keep these things in mind. Right? So here, basically, in this question, we have two errors. One is in part B and the other one is in part D. Okay? So we have understood that this is not the right collocation. Right, we have to add the expression gave him his and then add the right colloquial expression which can be either undivided or unswerving. Right, and then we said part D, we don't need independent. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Experience is something that happens in real right actual neither of the plans obviously this is part a right neither of the plans suits him and therefore he decided not to go out yesterday i don't think it is a, a superfluous expression right now quickly in this question can somebody point out what is the uh, clue word there's a clue word right what is the clue word who's going to give me the clue word the clue word will help you decide which part has the error. Yeah, Namrata, so what's the clue word here in the context? Anuba, tell me what's the clue word. Nobody is giving me the clue word. Everybody is giving me this part has the error. This is what we need to do. 
There is another clue word. Very, very obvious clue word. Read the sentence entirely. Yes, Deepika, thank you. The clue word is yesterday. We are talking about an action that happened has no relevance to today. Right? The action is very, very clearly. And we also have other words like Namrata pointed out, decided. Alright? Which means we understand that the action is in the past. Right? Neither is not really a clue word to help with the tense of the sentence, but the very obvious clue words are yesterday and decided. Right? So, which means I need to look at the other action verbs and see if it is in line with the tense of the sentence. So, obviously, suits him, suits is a simple present tense. I don't need a simple present tense. I need a past tense verb to be in line with yesterday and decided. Period. So, Karthik, correct. So, the error is in part B. Right? You change suits to suited him. That's it. Right? So, this is an error pertaining to tense. Right? So, when it comes to finding errors, we already know the possible types of errors we can encounter. We will have uh, errors pertaining to tenses. We can have errors pertaining to, uh, like we saw in the previous thing, it was a not only a word class error, it was also superfluous language. We will have errors pertaining to prepositions. So, let's look at a couple of other questions as well and see what sort of errors we need to constantly look for. Right? The more you practice, the more you'll know what to look for.